Guys, we have got an exciting video for you today. I'm here with Riff of Cliff. What's up, dude? What's going on, Jason? Nice. Uh, to, I'm happy you're here. Yeah, me too. Man. Always great to be here. Here at Replay Guitar Exchange in Tampa. Guys, we are going to tell you how to choose the best guitar for you. There's a lot of different choices, too, so we're going to try to narrow it down in this video. Yeah, we are, guys, and, and yo, Cliff, we're not really going to, we're not really going to get into brands so much. I know we got some specific guitars, we got several we're going to share with you, but this video is not about brands. This is about the type of guitar that fits you the best. You know, oftentimes, uh, people will look at another guitar player they admire, and Satriani or Steve Vai or Malmsteen or whoever, like, well, I want that guitar, and then they get it, and it's like, Oh, this just doesn't it doesn't feel right. Sure, I think that there's a lot of influence that someone can have over your choice. Yeah. But when you pick up a guitar, it's they're all going to have their own sonic thumbprint. They're all going to have their own feel, their own sound. So hopefully this video helps you to find what is best for you. That's what this is all about. And uh Cliff, what would you say we start with like as far as like, you know, getting the best guitar into your hands that's going to work best for you? What what would you say is one of the most important factors? Well, honestly, what you have in your hand, this is this is called a Fender Strat. Yeah. This is one of the most versatile guitars and probably one of the biggest sellers here at Replay Guitar Exchange. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have five different tonal options that you can get out okay. of these. And they're very comfortable guitars. These are single coil pickups when they're just a single, single like this. Yeah. Those are called single coils. Um, very twangy. They're great for blues. They're great for beginner because yeah. they're not going to be overkill. Um, and they're just super versatile. They have a really sweet, nice sound to them. Yeah, you've got your, you've got your, uh, we well, got a volume. You got two tone knobs here, right? Yep, that's correct. So there's a, the volume controls all the pickups, but the different pickups are controlled by different tone knobs depending on the position that you are in. So you've got more versatility as far as tone goes with uh, with this style of guitar. And you know, when we talk about strats, I want to get into the neck here because uh, that's. Uh, that's one of the most important things for me personally. You know, the neck, it's got, it's not a super thin neck, right? But it's not super wide. You got some guitars with a really thin neck and other guitars with like that baseball bat feel. The Strat style, most of the Strat styles, and again, we're not necessarily talking about a Fender Strat. There are different Strat styles. Most of those necks are kind of middle of the road, give or take a little bit. Right, yeah, and they can vary a little bit. So, for instance, this one that we have in this video this is uh, called a C profile yeah. shape. So it's it's deep, but it's not so deep where your hand might get fatigued yeah. or, you know, like for a beginner, like something that's huge. It's kind of in the middle of the line. And these reasons here are why it is one of the best guitars for a beginner or somebody who's just looking for versatility yeah. to try to dip their toes into the guitar world. The Fender Strat is an amazing choice. And of course, a lot of people will dip their toes into the Strat and then that's what they stick with. You yeah, know? <laughs> absolutely. It's so true. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to cover too real quick is, uh, is and we're going to cover all this stuff with the different styles here we've got, uh, but the fingerboard as well, the, everything from the frets to the types of frets, to the spacing of the frets, and then the width of the fingerboard as well. This, again, the Strat just really seems to be kind of like middle of the road, you know? Yeah, I think we should talk about this real quick because on a Fender Strat, you can get a maple neck or a maple fingerboard, gotcha. or you can get a rosewood, like which would be on this one, and we'll go over this guitar in a second. Yeah, we'll do that one next, yeah, yeah. But the, a maple fingerboard is, uh, uh, it's, it's more dense, it's, it's harder, and they actually have a lacquer over it so it's a brighter sound a spankier sound yeah. i know we're using weird adjectives now yeah, yeah. spanky sound <laughs> spanky sound and then a rosewood fingerboard would be yeah. softer and more porous and a warmer sound and i like the spacing of the frets on most of the strat guitars some now some strat guitars the frets or some other types of guitars the frets are a little bit closer but these have enough space my fingers are kind of chubby so these have enough space in between the frets to to clearly you know play those notes are these these are like regular frets or are they jumbo frets on here these are medium they're medium, medium jumbos i think okay. Kind of here. Okay. um and uh yeah they're pretty generous with the space that they give you so uh yeah. i mean there there is just a lot of room and a lot of room for comfortability on there too i need that i need that um you need this yeah, I need this guitar. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talked about pickups. I want to just briefly talk about the pickups. Um, so these have single coils. Uh, and I know a lot of you watching this, you play metal because you're on my channels. Thank you, by the way. Guys, real quick, don't forget to subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, but these single coils are typically known for, well, 
I mean, you can play rock and roll with them, obviously, but Absolutely. a lot of blues players use the single coils, a lot of, you know, uh, just different styles, country and that sort of thing. So I've seen videos and guys like, you know, will the single coil do metal? Yeah, it, you can. Yeah. There's no rules to anything, right? It, it might give you a really cool sound with your setup. Yeah. Typically, they're going to be a twangier sound, a, uh, a lighter sound and not as much low end in a single coil as a humbucker. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, awesome, man. So that's the that's the typical. This is a Fender Stratocaster again, guys, and that's kind of the the typical overview of the Strat style guitars. Again, there are other brands out there. Like I've got an LTD ESP LTD guitar, mm -hmm. Strat style, very similar to this. Mm -hmm. uh, they're different guitars, different pickups, but as far as the body and the neck and the the frets, the spacing, very very similar. So. Dude, let's talk about this guitar you've got in your hands right now, man. So this one is a uh, completely other side of the spectrum, really. It's a uh, a big electric Spanish hollow body. They, they call it the ES-335. Yeah. ES stands for electric Spanish. Uh, and this guitar is another very iconic, big, great sounding guitar. Yeah. Uh, with it being semi-hollow here, there's a block of wood here underneath all this so that they, they can you know, hold the bridge and the saddle into the guitar, uh, but it will give it more of an acoustic property to it. So when you're sitting there playing on the couch or whatever, you don't have to be plugged in and the guitar will still project really nicely. Uh, these have a humbucker pick, two humbucker pickups. Uh, so they're going to be that warmer, bigger sound, uh, but still a very sweet sound. And they also have a volume for each pickup and a tone for each pickup. There's a lot of knobs down there, man. I get my first, I've been playing guitar since 1989, as you guys know, I'm still intimidated by all this. I played a buddy's guitar on stage one time. Uh, he, he let me, you know, play his guitar just to jam with him. And I'm like, I turned the wrong knob and it shut my volume off. I'm like, wait a minute, so. <laughs> <laughs> a good rule of thumb with Gibson, and not always, but right. a good rule of thumb with Gibson is they typically will have a volume for each pickup and a tone for each pickup. And depending on where you are on the pickup selector, that's what's what each knob is going to control. And you got a three switch down there. You've you've got this, uh, and this is typical for guitars with two pickups, especially the humbuckers. You've got your you've got your uh, your neck pickup here. You can switch to that. You've got your bridge, and you've got a mix between the two, right? That's correct. So that middle sound is a little bit. Uh, there's less low end in it, yeah. and a little bit of a like almost like a out of phase between each other. It's very cool, very versatile. Let's talk about the neck on this thing, man. The, the, again, this is my personal, like when it comes to picking out a guitar that fits me, uh, the neck and the fingerboard, that's, I'm all about that. So this is quite different from what we just had earlier. Really different. And with Gibson, we can go down the rabbit hole because now they're doing reissues of certain years. You got a 61, yeah. you got a 64, and there's small differences in between each year. Uh, that will also determine the, the shape of the neck. In the custom shop, like this one, they're all done by hand. So even if you have two 61s, they might be slightly different. It's important to go and, and feel each one to make sure that you find the right one for you. That's key. Uh, yeah. it, it is really the key because I have felt two 61s that have been a little bit different, you know, but just not like drastically, not so dramatically, but enough for you to notice, right? And so something like this is still kind of the middle of the line. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say it's still close to a, a, a C-shaped neck, uh, but maybe just still a little bit thicker than the Fender Strat that we were just looking at. However, there are some on the on the Gibson line that are huge, massive, crazy necks. And we're we're gonna get to that one next. Actually, we've got that style of guitar we're gonna get to next, and I'll I'll, I'll show you the difference between the guitar we just talked about and this next guitar. But anything else particular about this guitar? Um, you know, as, as far as like the neck or anything goes, as far as the style, because it is a hollow body and, and you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between a hollow body electric and, and one of these normal electrics, I guess, you know. There is one thing I want to say with these. If you are a metalhead, which, awesome, metal's awesome, yeah. but if you are doing the metal stuff, you are more su susceptible to feedback with these guitars okay. because they are semi-hollow. You yeah. can create a feedback loop so sound will bounce right back into your sound hole. So that is just something to consider. Now, you could use it in a creative way, yeah. like Master Ted Nugent. Oh. So, you yeah. never know. Just try it out. And uh, just keep in mind, with high gain, you're more susceptible with to feedback with these. 
if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, the guitarist for Brian Adams used one of these uh, hollow body guitar. I'm not sure the brand, but uh, he had some really nice, creamy solos. It, mm -hmm. was, it wasn't overly, I'd say these guitars, this, this style of guitar, the hollow body in general, probably not made for metal. Of course, again, you can get creative. There are no rules, guys. Mm -hmm. You can play whatever you want. Why not? Why not make a different sound? You guys know I always encourage you create your sound, not trying to mimic someone else's. But uh, just just some notes on there. I, I've never actually played one of these. I might I might do that later. So you should, man. They <laughs> they really are a staff favorite here, yeah. and some of the best guitars in the world. Awesome, man. Well, the next guitar I want to bring out really a contrast to what we've talked about so far, and that's the point of this video uh, is just to going over the different styles, you know. So this guitar. Uh, it's a PRS, but it, I'll let you get into the details, but this is a Les Paul style, I would say, right? Yeah, so cool. it's shaped kind of like a Les Paul yeah. single cut. Let's so what this. they mean by single cut is we have one cut away down here, yeah. uh, which would be like a Les Paul, which the Les Paul, you know, came before this this line here. But that one cutaway just allows you to play down here uh, really nicely, and it still has this beautiful aesthetic here. It's really uh, nice. Yeah, really, just a full guitar. Uh, the reason we chose this instead of a Les Paul is because we want to show the versatility that yeah. you know you get that there is out there, and that you can get here at the guitar shop as well. And again, it's, it's about the style of guitar more right. so. Yeah, the Les Paul itself, uh, there, of course, you got different Les Pauls, a little different this, but the overall style as far as like maybe the thickness of the neck and that sort of thing is, is very similar uh, to that style. And to me, this neck is actually a little fatter. Yeah. A little, a little bit more chunky and maybe even a soft V in the neck, which means like it literally will come to a... Uh, I'm gonna drop the guitar like a yeah. V, <laughs> like that. that. <laughs> so, uh, and it's soft, so it's not like it's like super, uh, you know, dramatic there either. But uh, just a different style and a different feel. Let me hold this up real quick. I want to show you guys the difference here. Um, hopefully, you can see this. You can see this is the Fender Strat style we talked about earlier. This is the the PRS, the Les Paul style. You can see there that this guitar here, the PRS, is a bit thicker. Okay. And there's a little bit difference in the fretboard or the fingerboard size as well. So mm -hmm. that's, again, that's one of the things that kind of hit me when I'm looking for a new guitar. Uh, that's why it's so important, guys, that you play. If you don't play the guitar you buy, at least play the style. Because, uh, again, like we said earlier, a lot of people say, well, so-and-so plays this. I want that. Mm -hmm. You get it. And it's just like, this just doesn't feel right, you know? It, it's so true. And it's it's easy to be swayed. And that's why it's really important to go make your own conscious decision yeah. on what you're purchasing. Some people love these styles. I Like, I'm not, personally, I'm not a fan of Les Paul. I'm more of a Strat player, uh, you know, even though I do have a Tele, which that's a different story. Hey, we're getting to that next, by the way, too. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. What's some other features on this guitar is like as far as the fingerboard and or the style here and, and you know, I see there's a lot of space between the frets there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are these have a rosewood fingerboard, okay. so it's a, a softer, warmer sound. Up top here too, uh, PRS does their own style of locking tuners. I'll, yeah. I'll kind of put that up there so you can see it. But these tuners lock on the top there, That's cool. uh, which is really cool. Yeah. And then on the back here, we have these open gear tuners. I'll try to get it so you guys can see them, yeah. uh, which is really nice. And, and it's a... Uh, of course, on PRS, you get these really beautiful flame tops that are just... They're awesome. Yeah. Crazy beautiful nice. Guitar. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Like the kind of thing that's like a piece of art, yeah. you know? Um, and they're just really iconic instruments. PRS are, are known to be very high-end, very beautiful instruments. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So if you're looking for something like that, that'll get you covered for yeah. sure. If I were going to... I mean, this is me, me personally. If I were going to buy a Les Paul body style in, in that, you know, that, that style... I would probably get a PRS over uh, a Gibson. That's just my, but I know you love Gibson. I, I've got a good friend of mine that plays out. He's got like four or five Les Pauls and you know, you either love those guitars and that body style or it's just not your style. Right. Either way, it's okay. So that's, exactly. you know, that's the whole point of here. That, that's, I guess that's why they make so many of them. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good. You know, you, you, want, you want to find out what feels most comfortable in your hands. So uh, anything else about this style, uh, Cliff, that we didn't? Humbuckers. Oh, yeah, so up, yeah. it's similar to, uh, yeah. you know, like the 335 in that sense, or another Les Paul. It'll have humbuckers in there, and volume, tone, tone, and then a switch down here. Uh, this is actually a coil split down here, oh, cool. so you can actually get the single coil sound out of this, so it's a very versatile guitar. As that's well. cool, and that, that to me, that's great for your clean tones, man. Those Absolutely. single coils are great if you play a lot of clean type stuff. And is it safe to say that a lot, I don't say the majority, maybe a lot of Les 
all style guitars and this style of PRS, uh, that they come with humbuckers. I don't think I've seen too many single coils. On um, them. nope, but they exist. You see, uh, with a lot of single cut guitars, a lot of humbuckers, Humbug, but yeah. you can, there are definitely single coils out there too. In fact, I've, PRS does make some. So. And of course you got the switch here, so you don't, you don't need, you, you've got the single coil in here with a switch on this type of guitar. So right. that's another, that's another thing to look for. If you want variety in tones, if you play different styles, uh, something like that with, even though you got humbuckers only in here, you can make them single coils. So if you mm -hmm. want to expand beyond just rock or just metal or just whatever, you know, you've got that capability. So. You really do. You get a lot of bang for your buck with guitars that have that capability. Yeah, you do, man. You do. Let's pick up that telly, man. Here. I saw a telly over here somewhere. All right. Here that we go. Be this axe. The telly. All right. So this is a, another one of the, the, uh, most iconic guitars yeah. ever. The Fender Telecaster. Yeah. One of the coolest guitars ever, in my opinion. Everybody should own a Tele at some point in their life because they're a very versatile instrument. They are nice and lightweight, typically. Uh, they are very cool looking, kind of this cool retro vibe, you know, and you still have the single cut here. Yeah. But the, but with the Fender, it's nice and wavy, and this is this is the Telecaster shape here. Kind of cool. It is cool, and and going back to the point that I know we've reiterated this a few times, but yeah, the Fender Tele is the famous Tele, but uh, the Tele style of guitar, because there are other brands that make that same style. Um, I believe uh, ESP has a, a Tele style guitar mm -hmm. as well. Several uh, several guitar companies, guitar manufacturers make a Tele style. To me, they're a workhorse, man. I've got a Tele I've been playing on stage for a while now, and it's just proven to be just a solid workhorse. There's a reason why all these companies make the same shape you know when fender first came out with the telecaster which they started calling it that so they can advertise it on television yeah. they uh it, it just blew up it's just this huge you know movement in the guitar world yeah. and so successful absolutely so successful and now all these companies you know copy the shape of the stratocaster of the telecaster or the gibson les paul is like the, the ones that everybody copies right and there might be they're all a little bit different, but there's a reason for that. It's because they are yeah. so good and iconic. They are, man. Let's get into uh, the Tele style, like the, the pickups. We've got some single coils here. Mm -hmm. um, I know the Tele I've been playing has single coils, but I, I can still play metal with it. You know, we're talking about that. But yeah, you, you absolutely can. can. I saw yeah. John 5 uh, with Rob Zombie. Right, right. Dude, yeah. shredding. He's shredding on, on the Tele, yeah. It was awesome. So this is the American line. Uh, yeah. This is called the... Fender America Professional 2 Telecaster. So the pickups in this are V Mod 2 pickups, uh, which is the latest and greatest from Fender, and they they sound absolutely wonderful, really well rounded. You can get a lot of different sound out of it, uh, nice and bright, but also nice and uh, there's a great mid range twang to this kind of guitar. You have a three position, so really simple. It's one of the most simple guitars. If we're up here, it's this pickup and it. The middle is both pickups, and here is this pickup. And then we have a volume and a tone, and that is it. That's simple, and that's pretty cut and dry for the Tele style. Again, with other brands that make the Tele style, mm -hmm. it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty. That's pretty the same across the board. And I think simplicity uh, kind of goes back to it being that workhorse of a guitar. You don't really have a lot to think about, um, you know. I like I use my I use my neck pickup uh, sometimes for my fatter leads. Uh, and then if I'm playing distorted rhythms, I'll use the bridge pickup, you know, yeah. and sometimes I'll use I that did the middle. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll use that center, uh, you know, when, when it's going between the two pickups here, that center position for some of my clean rhythms. So mm -hmm. you've got simplicity, but also with diversity all in one kind of small simplified package. There, yeah. You know? And I think the world realizes this and that's why yeah. they're like, Oh, the telly is the best, the telly. and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. <laughs> I like that saying, man. So, what about the neck here on these tellies, Cliff? What What can you tell us about you know overall the you know the majority of tellies, the very, neck style? Very comfortable neck. Uh, C profile neck on this on this yeah. bad boy here. We have a rosewood fingerboard on this guitar, yeah. and but the the neck itself is maple, uh, so you can see that here. But the fingerboard rosewood, so yeah. nice and uh, porous and and warm and soft, easy to play. And up here we have the Fender tuners, uh, which are great tuners, by the way. They hold yeah. tune wonderfully. 
I can attest to that because my telly has the fender locking tuners on. I don't know if these, these aren't the locking ones, are they? These no. are not on this. You'd have okay. to go to a higher model to get that, although okay. you could always put those on. Yeah. You know, modify your guitar. We'll talk about that uh, at the end, so do hang around for that. We got one more guitar to share with you, but we'll we'll definitely talk about some of the modifications. But yeah, yeah my, my telly has the fender locking tuners, which Absolutely. Uh, it stays in tune, man. <laughs> it's crazy. That's what we want. And then yeah. one more thing on this is on the back here. Uh, the heel here uh, where the neck fits in. We have this little contour here where it cuts away, which is really nice in the Pro 2s because you can play up here and it's not digging into the meat of your hand um, and, you know, being uncomfortable in any way. It's a very comfortable guitar. Awesome, man. Well, we've got one more guitar and again, hang around because we're going to we're going to share some other really helpful tips in how to get the best guitar for you. That's what this is all about. It's all about you. Uh, we're getting into kind of the metal slash shredder style <laughs> yeah. of guitars here. This is a Steve Vai. Uh, yeah. Ibanez model. Here, That's right? what the handle. His guitar yeah. has the handle. Oh, yeah. Kind of cool. I like that a lot. So. This guitar has a lot going on, okay? So we have a humbucker, a single coil, and then a humbucker. So if you want the single coil sound, well, you go to the middle, there you go. You got the stratty sound. That's perfect, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If you want a screaming humbucker sound, well, then you switch to one of these and you absolutely can get that tone. The neck on these guys, on Ibanez in general, uh, are flat. Flat and fast. So if you're a shredder, if you're a metalhead, yeah. they work really well with that kind of stuff because since they're so small, they're easy to maneuver on. And uh, that's what it looks like when you shred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And then a locking system on these. So this is called a Floyd Rose. Yeah, we got the tremolo here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So if you like the squealies and the dive bombs and the you know the the Van Halen and Dimebag Daryl stuff, uh, these. Are awesome because they allow for you to do that kind of stuff. This actually isn't a Floyd Rose. On yeah, that's the Ibanez. That's their own. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of their uh, tremolo setup. Yeah, there. they make their own. <laughs> it's called Edge, right? Pro Edge or something like yeah, that. It's yeah, it's something like that. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I, no, no, I get tongue tied. But yeah, the, same uh, concept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Ibanez makes their own and they lock it up here so that it holds tune. And yeah, uh, yeah these things are awesome. This one's lightweight. Sweet. Yeah, it is pretty light, you know, um, and which I like on stage, you know, I love to have a lighter guitar. I, you guys know I play uh, play solo gigs, and I've got a couple gigs come up with a band, so uh, the lighter the better. Sometimes we're up there for three and four hours, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but man, so now this, I want to I want to share a comparison. I'm going to grab uh, the Les Paul body style, right, the, the PRS guitar. The single cut. Yeah, I want to show you guys the difference between the neck thickness. Oh yeah, thanks, Liv. <laughs> I think that's a, okay, you guys can see that. See how this one in my left hand is much Way thicker, back. yeah. So that's the RG, and let me let, me let you see the uh, fingerboard here, okay guys? So you can see the difference there. Yeah. All right, so this uh, this is the wizard neck, right, Cliff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what they call them, the wizard neck. Yeah, which I love. Because it allows you to play like a wizard. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of smells <laughs> like a wizard, too. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome guitar, man. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Ibanez. I love it. I, I have, and you guys know, uh, I have my, my Ibanez Prestige RG1570. I think it's 2001 model. Uh, I even kept the stock pickups. You know, I had you guys change out the pickups, and yeah. I, I switched them right back to the socks. I got a video <laughs> on that. But I, I love that guitar. It's the guitar I play the most, and I think a lot of it has to do, and this is going back to what I said earlier, when you're choosing the right guitar for you, I think, I personally think that the neck and how the fingerboard feels has a lot to do with that. Now, I wouldn't even worry about so much the brand of the guitar. I'm, I know there's like Ibanez. I don't feel like you can go wrong with Ibanez. Mm -mm. But you may love Fender. You may love Gibson, right? Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. But it's all about how it feels to you. Right. This neck feels far better to me than the baseball bat necks and the thicker necks. My hands just fit better on them. It, me too. I, I prefer know. a smaller neck, but... Here at the shop, we sell a lot of guitars, and I sell yeah. some. Some guys swear by the big fat neck. Right, so right. Some of you like that, you know. My w number one bit of advice, having worked in the in the music industry selling get fiddles now for years, is just come try them out. Find what's best for you, and we'll be happy to sit with you and find the right one for you. We want yeah. you to be happy with your guitar because rock and roll, man, it's got to keep yeah. coming. <laughs> so come now, on. Should we grab real quick uh, something with? You know, an ebony fingerboard and, and something with uh, active pickups because I don't think we've covered I'll that. be right back. All right. Okay. 
So we actually got two more guitars, types of guitars to share with you. There's a good reason why we got two. Yeah, that happens here a lot. We'll go over this one first. So this guitar has an ebony fingerboard, which is this dark look here, uh, and a hard wood that is, is quick and, and really comfortable and uh, very aesthetically pleasing as which, well. These are kind of the ebony fingerboards. I, I've always heard them is is being called fast fingerboards, like like it, it plays effortlessly. It's really fast. Uh, me, I kind of like the rosewood better because I don't I feel like I have a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are when you play these, you're like whoa, my fingers are just flying all over the place. Absolutely, you know? <laughs> I, I love an ebony fingerboard. They're nice. And then this body shape. This is a Dean Z. Uh, with a this body shape is an exotic body shape as you can see yeah uh, looks absolutely killer on stage uh, very comfortable because you can kind of rest your arm up here you know just, hey yeah, what's cool. going on <laughs> <laughs> uh, really cool really very cool guitar yeah. uh, so definitely keep those on your radar but that was the main feature we want to talk about is is the different you know when you're playing guitar you want to go through the different types of necks and fingerboards. That's why we grabbed this one with the ebony uh, fingerboard here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the body style, you know, the look means a lot. Like if you've got a certain look you're going for, I'd say playability obviously is, is the most important thing. You know, you don't want a guitar that looks cool, but you're like, I can't play this that well. Uh, but that is, you know, when you're, when you're going for the whole package, it plays awesome. I love the look. So that's part of choosing the right guitar for you. Dude, I tell people all the time, aesthetic is the second most important thing because you want to be inspired you want to look at it and exactly, go like oh yeah. that thing looks sweet and i want to play it so absolutely now one more to share with you one more style uh, there's a couple of different things going on with this guitar here so this is something we have not talked about yet and that is active pickups versus passive everything that we've uh that gone over so far all these guitars have had passive pickups yeah and they are more of a, a brick wall sound so when you plug it in it's you know a lot, a lot louder, ready to, ready to shred, ready to absolutely rip your head off, especially something with like this, where it's like eight strings. That's the other thing we want to <laughs> talk about. One thing, guys, if you're a beginner, just my opinion, and some of you may disagree, but I believe you should start out on a six string, start out in standard tuning, get the basics down. However, yeah. if you're not a beginner and you're watching this and you're just looking for the right guitar for you, you've had a hard time finding the right guitar for you, and you want to expand, well, Eight strings. <laughs> I've been playing guitar for over half my life, and eight strings still throws me off. Oh, yeah. At some point, man, it's like, you should play the harp. Seven throws. I've got a seven. <laughs> I've actually got a seven string that I'm trying to sell right now, and I can't get anybody yeah. to buy it. <laughs> They're crazy, man. And then the yeah. neck, like, you want to talk about big, like, yeah, it's massive. So uh, it definitely, you have to kind of step back, maybe understand theory a little bit, uh, take a look at the at where you are playing on this thing because oh, yeah. it will definitely throw you off a little bit at first, but it does open up a whole other octave or two that you can get out True. of the instrument. And uh, it's very cool. You can get some really aggressive, really cool uh, stuff, especially the modern metal sound uh, yeah. can be done really easily on a seven or eight string. So guys, a quick recap on choosing the right guitar for you. Before we do that though, Cliff, I want to say thank you so much, man, for having me yeah. here. Thank you to Replay Guitar Exchange for having me here I, I love coming here i feel like this is my second home i feel like i work Absolutely, here sometimes man. We love having <laughs> you, man. guys if you're in the tampa area in surrounding areas in florida it's a no-brainer to come here to get your music gear to get your guitars and amps uh but you guys do online orders as well yes we do and be sure to check out our website yeah it's replayguitar.com and we will ship guitars to you for free. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. Hey, ship it to me, even though I'm like 30 minutes away. We will. We'll do it. <laughs> I'd rather come in here and get it because I'm going to jam. Uh, but guys, there's a link to the Replay Guitar Exchange website in the description of this video. Uh, I'm also going to link to your YouTube channel, uh, Cliff shares a lot of information. you got such a wealth of knowledge with guitars and gear and all that, and he shares that on the Replay Guitar Exchange YouTube channel. Uh, you do a, a series called Riff with Cliff, which I love. Yeah. So I, I'll have the links to the website, guys. Browse around, see what they've got. Uh, you guys always have like pre-owned guitars, which you can get great deals on pre-owned stuff, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so yeah, do check it out, guys. So a quick recap, you know, we talked about styles, body styles, necks, uh, pickups, you know, the, the tonal configurations. These are things you want to think about. The biggest thing for me is the neck, uh, the width of the neck, uh, the thickness of the neck. You know, I like the thinner ones. I like the fingerboards a certain way. So you just have to play different styles of guitars uh, and just find out what fits best in your hands. This Ibanez fits really good in my hands. 
perhaps I should take this home. I think so, man. <laughs> you know? I'll make you a deal. No, and you're, you're right, man. It, you got to just come and feel them. And, and yeah, you got to find complain. what's right for you. Yeah. And what, I mean, what's the most important thing for you, Cliff? Because, I mean, you play you play out. Cliff plays out as well. You're, you're being quasi mojo. You guys yeah. play out quite a bit. So uh, I got to be honest with you. It's the same thing. It's the feel. It's the playability. Yeah. If, it, uh, if it feels good, then that's the first thing I jive with. Number two, aesthetic. I want it to look cool on stage. And uh, that's pretty much it man i mean from yeah. there it's all rock and roll baby you don't overthink it we were talking about that earlier you know yeah. how some people like they're like well it doesn't have this that that and that and it's like sure. look you can't overthink it just pick it up and you know i love blind tests just pick it up play it does it sound good to you does it feel good to you that's the one you know things like real quick things like uh like you should do some blind testing i should do some blind testing we, cool, we may man. do that i may come in next time and, and just have you hand me a guitar and i'm playing like a, i don't like this guitar i, I like <laughs> this awesome. one better you know uh like i'm already know i'm an ibanez fan i know i like this ibanez but things like pickups we we're talking about pickups earlier like passive pickups if you don't like the tone, like if you've got a guitar that you love how it plays, but you don't like the way it sounds, you can always change out the pickups, right? Absolutely. You know, so absolutely. So like we're saying, you just have to come in and you just have to play the guitar and and really just see and hear and feel what is best for you, dude. Thank you once again. Guys, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative for you. Uh, again, check the links in the description of this video here. Guys, we will see you next time. Until then, keep it metal. Or I guess sometimes keep it blues and country and everything else too. Because Keep playing music. Keep playing music. That's what counts. All right, guys. See you on the next one. Guys, real quick, one more thing. These videos that I do at Replay Guitar Exchange, they are not sponsored. I'm not getting paid to do these videos. Uh, this is just a really awesome partnership that I have with the folks at Replay Guitar Exchange, which I absolutely love it there. I generally just, I could spend all day in that place hanging out with Cliff and all the folks that work there. Uh, so a big thank you to everyone. What I want to ask from you, though, uh, when you go to the link, there's a link again in the description of this video. Check out the gear and all that. If you're purchasing online or if you go to the store in person they have an awesome store in there and you decide to buy a guitar or amp or anything please mention my channel please mention jason stallworth again i don't get any kickbacks but it's good to know that the content that i'm putting out there uh, especially when i film it replay it's just good to know that that is spreading the word it's just doing good things for everybody and that just works it just creates a win-win uh, for all of us so i would appreciate that uh, guys a huge thank you of course to cliff all the staff at replay guitar exchange and the owner there for allowing me to get this content to you guys and i also want to thank all of you guys all of you watching all of you who have subscribed to my channel and if you haven't subscribed push that little button give this video a like i seriously want to express my gratitude uh, i really appreciate you guys so Guys, we'll wrap it up there. Like Cliff said earlier, keep playing music.